okay so we are going to start the session in this session we are going to discuss lambda then we are going to discuss map filter and reduce which is mostly asked in the interview session then we will discuss decorators how these decorators are being uh, used in the python finally we will discuss class and objects inside the python right so this is the agenda of our session and thank you all for joining this this meeting and today we will be covering several topics including lambda map filter and reduce right so first and foremost let me discuss this lambda function this lambda is actually lambda is actually function declaration here we have function declaration and inside the function declaration let me have this lambda underscore tick long so in this variable i'm going to store lambda is my keyword and two arguments here i'm passing two arguments x comma y so lambda is predefined keyword and including x comma y i'm going to add x and y both right so this is simply creating a user defined keyword variable or container which will store my lambda x comma y two arguments and then x plus y like i want to add these two numbers here so i'm going to perform this x plus y operator here so let me run this code here and then you can call this function lambda function call right so using this function call we will call the result and inside this result i'll call this user defined function lambda tech long and then i'll pass two integers number this is 50 and 78 so finally i'll print this value which will encompass consist of this result means addition part of these two here you can see it's printing 93 so what is 93 here 93 is addition of 78 and 15 so when you go for the manual operation that is 15 plus 78 you will get 93 as well but we are creating the user defined function which is lambda function tech line without the function variable so what are the advantage over conventional def and then so like if we do not have lambda so what i have done i i'll just create the uh, like this one def and then create this lambda function this name and will pass the argument x comma y right and then hit enter inside this enter i'll write i'll return these two addition x comma y right and then finally i'll call this value right so you can see this lambda could c and this will be printed out right so the output is same but what's the difference over uh, advantage over the, the conventional def and this lambda function so the advantage is we are having this value this reduced number of uh, 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 number of codes here you can see one two three numbers required but here we require only one and two it's reducing only one line so it hardly matters it is reducing one line but we have very small piece of code but if you'll go for very higher like 2000 or 3000 piece of code lines of code so of course it will decrease 10 to 20 lines 10 to 20 lines means you are saving compiler time compiling time you are saving memory fetching from the operating system to the primary memory to the uh, to the internal memory and processing and multiprocessing as well so so many processing time is reducing here when you are reducing number of lines right and variables is also reducing here you can see term lambda tech line or another tech lang is also reduced here right so this is the advantage over conventional method right what other 
definitions we are going to take we will see in upcoming session how these lambdas are going to take advantage here right the next topic we are going to discuss map filter and reduce so this is somewhere uh, correlated with the list comprehensive we have already say, uh, seen but let me remi revise this uh, number here so this is numbers is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6 here we have six numbers i need another variable which is squared number this squared number is again converted my so on again it is taking map right so it okay so let me take first the lambda function i'm going to create this lambda function what's lambda function x the responsibility of this lambda is taking one argument over this argument it will perform x raised to power 2 right it will convert all the values to 2 and i'll take this value like map this value or deploy this value to my function to my list value sorry not function to my list value so list number is list is list name is numbers like right? what's the numbers here it's a list name so i'll write my numbers here and then i'll convert this entire statement again to the list list right so this is my status part like how this execution will perform right we will go first inside first lambda will be created out so first argument only single argument and then this argument will take the power of 2 then we will take numbers over we are going to map this function like uh, like we, we want to deploy this lambda over these numbers right so i'm going to deploy this lambda function over this list elements then convert this entire value to the list recursively so i'm going to run this code and you will find all the numbers are taking x raised to power 2 that's the power of each elements are performing here right so this is the beauty of map and list value and here we are let's say i'm not deploying list here and just printing it you can see it just map but didn't get that output that list conversion so for that type casting, I'll have to deploy list out of it, right? So you can take another example of this. Suppose I'm going to create any, like NUMB. So this is my list element. And this time I'm going to increase my numbers also. Let's say I'm having more number in my list. And the user increase number of element in my list at the runtime. So what how this list will respond how this map and lambda function will respond it will give it will deploy this lambda over numb which is the list now and now it will give the output fraction of seconds the, the same task is done within fraction of second because we are not dependent upon number of items inside the list defined here you can increase or decrease number of items it will map the same function over the given set of list so this is the performance of our values right next point comes with the filter here we have two new list and the filter function okay let me go for the okay so once we have defined the map function here so we have filter new list filter and then function will be their iteration this is the skeleton for my filter right and what's the what, what, what's the responsibility of this filter we will come across in few seconds so what we have done we have just created numbers is equal to and then 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6 right so these numbers are just defined as numbers i need more even numbers but see the so even numbers are just list and this list is performing filter so i'm going to perform this filter and just creating lambda function across x with the x percentage 2 right if this condition is true then only my numbers like my numbers will be 
printed out right so, so let me print this even numbers so this is not doing something rather it is checking this condition whether this condition is true over this list of set of items it will just give even numbers so here you can see in, instead of so many elements here i am getting only even numbers so let me replace these set of elements from the easiest one so now i am having more complex number in my list and let me run this code again so here you can see it's giving all the even numbers not the odd numbers right but the same filter will apply will can be deployed using not equal to so what is not equal to here it will seek odd value only and will filter out over there so here we have odd values and you can see all the odd values are filtered out right here we have all the filtered out right now the second term we have second item we have in our function that is called reduce this is mostly most most frequently asked in the interview ki interview puchte hain ki reduce kya hai what is filter map kya hota hai map se aap kya samajhte ho what do you understand by filter what are the difference between two so first we have seen list which is just deploy the relevant function over the set of element filter is filtering elements on the basis of conditions given conditions this lambda condition and it's just filtered out right so what is the filtered out for this we need to take this from function tools i need to import this module reduce and function tools is library right so i'm going to import this reduce for this number and i'm going to create take product reduce this one so let me run this code here so here you can see this is creating product of all the elements here right can you see so i'm going to multiply all the product recursively right it will perform the same lambda function in between the given elements not the individual element but over given elements can you see it's giving the multiplication of all the, these values right can i deploy this reduce function in either way yes now i am going to take another complex value here which is let's say these elements right so all the elements are replaced with the 1 2 3 4 5 6 and you, you will get the multiplication all with these value because you have given x multiply y and this function will deploy or the recursively multiply all the numbers and will give the product at the screen here you can see this big number is the product of all these numbers here right so this is the difference between reduce filter filter just given the base of given condition and map which will map the same operation same value over given set of list right so this is the part of these three numbers right now we have the second topic good to go with the decorators right so decorators are what so decorators are again useful in the python language here we have something values like decorator functions here right here you can see original function and then we have inside the decorator we have this definition and wrapper function and here we have arguments like which will pass only one argument at single time here we have double asterisk which we pass double argument at the time right and finally this original result will be passed out and we will we will see what are these asterisk and double asterisk aws like keyword arguments and arguments only but as of now you just see this decorator function inside the function right so let me run this code here we have code before function value right and the complete code says here we have decorated function and code after function will be deployed here right now i'm going to apply this function fun apply a decorator to a function 
this is decorator function can you see at the rate of decorator function here we have this name and this will define the original function here you can see original function and arguments and double arguments right let me run this code so you will find this code block right so let me finish this code block also suppose i am having this decorator function then wrapper so f wrapper function executed before original function dot name this is my function and that name right then i'll greet this name f hello and this one so let me run this one here one here you can see wrapper function executed before greet right we have called this function greet so this greet should be executed first but we have written this decorator function because of this decorator function this this print statement is just executed right original function dot name and then we are printing this hello john right so if you are going to comment this line you can see the output will be different now from the previous one can you see only greet john is just passed to this df greet and this print hello john is printed out on the screen we do not have any role of this decorator function because we have commented this line right the moment i will comment this line so first priority to execute this one then this function will be called out so this is the role and responsibility of my decorator values right next topic we have about class right so what are the class anyone what is class what is object write in the comment section like what do you understand by class python is object oriented or function oriented or method oriented or what what is the role of this python here actually python is object oriented language everything in C, inside the python whether it is decorated or the function or the list or compile uh, like this dictionary set everything is class and the variable created inside this value is called this one is called uh, object right suppose we have a class and this class name is my class right and we do not have any curly braces so i'll call it this curly braces and hit run so x is equal to 5 i'm giving i'm uh, writing very small piece of code for my value so here i am having x is equal to 5 right so so let me run this code and let me call let me print this class value my class so it will give class and main my class right but if you create any object here let's say p1 is the first object so for this my class i'll create this value initialize this any method and inside this value i'm going to print p1 inside this p1 i'll call this p1.x this is the uh, i'm going to call this from this method i'm going to call x is this parameter this argument from my class right so let me run this code here you can see this is 5 so this 5 is what this 5 is the value of my x here right similarly you can go for another class let's say this class is what let's say this is person right any person is just created have that value inside this person i'm having some methods here some functions so i'll start with this init init is what double underscore underscore init init is, means initialization every definition every function or every method inside the class most of the times they are initialized with double underscore double underscore init 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 is initialization we are going to comments this method right so inside this init i am going to take first self which is mandatory so every first argument is self inside this uh, method you can take any other name but self is most widely used and then we have a's value here 
so we have two arguments name and as self is by default argument for me right which is a prerequisite for here so using this self i'm going to access this name value which is equal to name itself and the second self will access self dot as for my as value right and here i'm going to take p1 is equal to person and inside this person i'm going to call first name so this is the first name john right person is my class name so i'm going to pass these two arguments of of course name is consist any string value so i'll assign this in string value there and age is let's say 36 right so you want to execute this one yes I have just executed if I am going to execute this P1, I'm going to uh, going to get this detail. It's going to start this main function, the class belong to person, and here I'm something another values at uh, this might be address in my memory. But I want to print some exact value. Let's say this p1 dot name because p1 is what? P1 is the method, and inside this method, two arguments are passed. I need these two arguments individually. So I'll write first argument p1 dot name. I'll write second argument p1 dot age. So it it's a printing two two things separately, right? So this is the concluding part for my class. Very simple class. Here we have definition method inside the. This is the initialization part. Self is by default for any method inside the class. And using this self, I'm going to access this name and then parent value will be assigned there, right? So we have so many other things. Let's say we have Python inheritance, right? Which is very important inside the class concept. So parent class is the class being inherited from also called base class. We have something base class like our father, forefathers, grandparents, they have some property and we are going to fetch or we are going to inherit that property, our daily life habitual, our fooding habitual, our physic values, physic dimensions, right? Our body structure, everything is inherited from our forefathers. Similarly, we are creating child class is the class that inherits from inherits from another class also called drive class. So this parent is drive parent like this child is drive class and parent is base class. So let's see how code is going to execute. So let's say I'm going to create this person. This is the parent and inside this person I'm going to create this double asterisk double asterisk in it double asterisk and going to create this cells comma first name this is the first name and last name of my value right and going to access this value and the method is same self dot f name is equal to f name then self dot l name is equal to l name Right? So this is the way we have done earlier. Now along with this definition, we have another methods inside this person class, which is the base class here. This called this is called print name. I want to print the name over here. So I'll take only one arg argument, which is by default. If you do not have any argument, but at least you will have to keep self there. Right? So I'm going to hit here. So inside this print, I'm going to create this self sorry this self dot f name this first name and then i'm going to create self dot last name i want to print these two names right so i'm going to run this code and going to print going to create this method here here you can see use the person class to create an object we have created this object here this is in the first line we have created this object using two arguments first is john doe and then execute the print name method right we are ex 
executing this print name over this object and this object is taking person as a two arguments so let me keep it like let's say like this is Sachin as a first name and the last name is Saxena so let me print here so did I make any mistake here okay okay so we have first name f name Oh, we have RST first, RST first name, and then LAST last name, right? So we have first name and last name, and we have defined over the, we have called this print name method from my class person, right? So this is the, the way we can create this one, right? All right, so this is the call like person and the print name over here right now i want can i give can i pass any class without the argument yes so this is the way without passing any value to my child child class right so inside the child class which is the student and here you can see the person person is the parent or the base class here and student is the drive class which i am just creating now without passing any value inside my child class right now i'm going to create this another variable let's say call it y here and using this y y is just in the first line y created the student mike and this one let me create this is jyoti any another candidate jyoti and this is verma last name her last name and y which is the object of this one is calling print name again you can see although this is the child class student still it's a printing the name of my uh, student which is the pay like uh, drive class right still it's a uh, acquiring or inherited the parent class methods which which is defined inside the person but not inside the student class still this student class is taking advantage of this print name this is the this is this concept is called python inheritance because this student is taking all the properties from the student there right now we have okay okay can you see this class dog here we are have mass okay let me check the, do we have any doubt here right so here we have another case study this is case study says create a master class dog right and these dog one dog two dog three are uh, this one uh, these these are objects right and these objects are having a state or something attributes of course they, they will have they all will have breed age color they all will have be, be they uh, uh, means different kind of behaviors they will uh, somewhere th somewhere will, will, will bark or not work sleep or eat their physical property right so we are supposed to create that kind of function there right that kind of object here right okay so how we can solve this question using coding part so let me go through this part suppose we have class dog this one is a simple class and this attribute attribute one is what this is mammal right suppose this is mammal so we have a second attribute this attribute is what we have dog right and these two are arguments and we are going to create a simple method this simple method is defined and here we have function and this function will get self here right hit enter and i'm going to print this value here and just simple statement i am a just example this self self dot 
attribute one right and the same printed out in the second line using the oh cut c cut v and it will say i am a attribute two it will acquire the attribute two here right so we have created this one right so inside this code we have driver code right so what is driver code so we have some like this driver code is just dog so this is roger roger is again a name and this will create the object initialization right and i'm going to initialize this value okay oh i didn't run this code and then I just created this object here, right? And then access class attributes, and here we have access class attribute and method through object, and this Roger will get the Roger dot attribute one, right? And then call this function num name name. Here you can see it's a printing Roger dot attribute one. Set what is attribute one? Attribute one is mammal, right? And what is the responsibility of this function here we have first and two both the print statement will be printed out right if you call this function you will get both the statement will be printed out right similarly you can create this is the dog one right so let me create this copy this function here and cut c cut v right so for example i am going to create another function dog1 and using this dog1 object i am going to acquire this dog1 hit run you can see this is deployed over the first object similarly you can create the second object as many as object required and we will convert we will access all the element here and here you can see it's a printing all the values there right so this is the property of dog1 and dog2 right another thing we can see so this is suppose we have a sample class with init method right In previously we have not seen any init method here but here we have some init method method which is self and name and self dot name is get just occur and say hello hello my name is self dot name which is actually this name here so let me run this code and here we are going to initialize this one right so p is equal to person nickel right so nickel is just p dot say hi right it will call this say hi method and person will pass this nickel value nickel here right self dot name so let me run this code here you can see the hello my name is nickel right in case you will call this function in either name let's say i'm going to get this q value and my name is inside this search in let me run this code now it's calling hello my name is search in right so this is the example of method within the method and without the init method right now we can go for the another uh, come back to the dog method we are going to deploy this init method over my dog example right so this dog is having this constructor actually which is self and breed right and the color value here right so self dot breed it's again the characteristics here we can see this state attribute self dot color is again the attribute or the state for my objects here we are having objects of dog class so first we roger deck pulse and brown bulldog it is black right its color is black so i'm going to run this code and you will find this entire detail sheet so roger's detail roger is a dog Pug, pug and broad. Bu Bujo details. Bujo is a dog. Breed is bulldog. Color is black. Right. And accessing class variable using class name. You can see dog dot animal. 
so dog dot animal is what here we have dog values key for my string value right but here you can see this detail is all about my uh, entire object so here we have two objects and these two objects are accessing these constructor is constructed in initialize with underscore underscore in it initialization and access this attribute right in the same way you can create the behavior and of course they will include this behavior as well include breed and color you can include the behavior as well when you will create more definition or more uh, part there right okay so once we have done we are good to go so we have more example here let me create these constructors in python so here we have constructors in python so default constructor so inside the default constructor we have a simple constructor which doesn't accept any arguments right its definition has only one argument and its reference for instance being parameterized constructor we have constructor with par parameter is known as parameterized constructor right so here we have a code for the same page disk one oh. so example of default constructor is what so inside the geek for geeks we have this default constructor which is not having any name this 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 definition this method is not having any name actually this geek for geeks is itself is the name for this constructor right and then we have print geek another second method inside this class and we are going to create the object of this class which is geek for geeks and finally calling the instance method using the object print and let me run this code you can find this geek for geeks this is purely the message printed here right so if i am going to i am inside geek for geeks i'm going to change it here you will find the changed output here right this is the example of instance method for the same default constructor right when we have example of parameterized constructor let me call it here so here you can see this is the class where we have first second and answer of course f and s are just to first and second and display first number second number and addition of, of what addition of two numbers plus a string self dot answer so what is the answer here answer is self dot answer plus first and two addition of first and two both the integer numbers creating objective of the class and object addition 1000 comma 2000 this will be two integers and this will be passed inside my addition which is the constructor for my class and inside the addition i am going to add these two so this is calculate right here you can see we are going to call this calculate over this object and then finally display let me run this code here you can see first number is 10,000 1,000 sorry second number is 2,000 and addition of two numbers is 3,000 this is way we just call the calculate and then display finally right so what is the role of parameterized constructor means we have some parameters arguments here here we do not have arguments which is by default only message is displayed some string values or numbers are constant numbers are there but when we have inside the constructor when we have any arguments set of arguments then we will call it parameterized constructor this is the difference between default constructor and parameterized constructor right and we will use these arguments for adding subtracting or uh, displaying some message and some mathematical calculation there right so this is the role of my values right in the same way we have some another part destructors destructors are called when object get destroyed we have stored some memory there and we are now destroying that part so destructors are needed as much as in C++ because Python has a garbage collector that handles memory manager automatically and delete method is known as destructor method in Python. 
this is very much important question inside the interview they ask the and it is called when all reference to be detected deleted and we have garbage collected right so let me write this python program to illustrate more about this default cluster you can see this is illustrate destructor and let me see this one the printed employee created deleted function print destructor called employee deleted right here we have delete object so you can see delete object means if you run this code again object so you won't find any value right but if you will if you will run run this code again here employee created and you will find this existence is still this existence right right if you will uh, display any value or call any uh, constructor here so it will be there but let's say let me recall this input no it's not going to call this one but we we are having this existence inside the memory right so we'll print work here p r i t and print work here yes so it's going to show the existence value but if you will deploy this delete object once suppose we have deleted object right and when you are trying to print this value you can see the name error name object is not defined because it had just removed from my memory right so this is the part of this is the all about the class and object right thank you all for joining this session and we are going to uh, accomplish we are going to summarize what we have studied here we have covered the class we have covered the like object python inheritance we have covered the like decorators here like right? so in this session we have covered the filters map reduce right before that we started from the lambda function so all these questions are asked in the interview and if you have an idea about these sessions and these parts so definitely you will get you will be able to qualify that interview sessions right thank you once again for joining this session